Welcome to this video on identifying promising practices for rural development. Why should we focus on promising practices for rural development? Rural areas can possess innovative solutions to problems of rural decline, as well as initiatives that support rural regeneration. This is a key idea behind looking towards promising practices as part of rural development. So what does this idea of promising practice really mean? Let's explore this for a few moments. Promising practices can include a range of practices from, for example, time-limited projects and community-based initiatives to specific policies and new organisational models. While they can be, they don't have to be long established and deeply tested approaches. They can be novel ideas that look promising and are starting to show positive impacts in rural areas. They are also classed as promising because we first need to assess them to see if their promise can be realised. This might mean identifying, for example, if and how they might transfer or be adapted from one rural place to another. But how do we identify a promising practice in a rural development context? One way to do this is to draw on existing research and theories about rural regeneration and development. But also, this may generate many factors to consider, making the assessment of practices complex and time consuming. And this is even before we move to more in-depth case study of the practice to understand its real promise. Instead, we can try to distill the essence of these ideas into some key principles. In our research, we came up with six principles to identify promising practices. They were based on the project's conceptual guidelines and wider overarching objectives. The, the idea was that this would provide a sound basis in existing knowledge and theory for how we select promising practices for a more in-depth study. So what do the principles mean? What ideas do they embody? We'll next explore each one. First, we identified the principle of efficiency. This relates to the level of investment to pursue specific aims and using resources efficiently. This principle looks beyond simple financial costs and takes a more comprehensive view on value for investment. For example, the project could generate added value or spin-off benefits for the rural area that go beyond the main aims of the practice. The second principle is legitimacy. This taps into the idea that a practice would be viewed as legitimate if there is an identified need for it, provided by some type of evidence, either formal research evidence or strong anecdotal evidence, or simply that the practice has local relevance, making it legitimate. For example, the decline issue the practice addresses is identified locally by a stakeholder organisation or is a grassroots response to local needs. Principle number three is that practices should be rooted. This tries to capture thinking around the resources that should under underpin development. Place-based local resources are important in rural regeneration, but also important resources can originate outside of rural areas. Local and non-local resources can combine such as practices based on urban-rural connections. This principle also embodies the idea that benefits are rooted locally, such as creating new or improving existing opportunities in the local rural economy. For example, this might include creating new jobs or improving the quality of, of existing jobs. The practice might help to fill key infrastructure deficits or address skills gaps in the local economy. Next, we have principle number four, interconnected. The interconnected principle sees rural decline problems as potentially interconnected and influencing each other. For example, the practice might address limited job and education opportunities for young people in rural areas, therefore responding to the twin issues of economic and demographic decline. The interconnected principle is also about the importance of networks in rural regeneration and development. For example, networks can work to connect actors with different kinds of knowledge, potentially sparking new ideas supporting regeneration. 
Then we have principle five, innovation. This is built on the idea that innovation is of vital importance to support positive reinvention and change in rural areas. This encompasses different forms of innovation, such as innovation through entrepreneurship, but also social or cultural innovation. It also raises the importance of considering in our assessment of what is promising, the transfer potential of innovations. The practice should show some evidence, even if just emerging, of its potential for replication or adaptation. Finally, principle number six is adaptability. This relates to strengthening local capacities to adapt and respond. This could be through building particular capacities such as stronger networks in a rural community or building, people, building people's skills and knowledge. Local capacities to adapt and respond proactively to change are viewed as crucial for regeneration. Finally, how might we approach, apply, apply, apply this approach in practice? This set of principles provides a flexible way to identify promising practices. The principles can be used as a whole to guide identification of promising practices. But also, depending on your objectives, you might choose a certain number of the six principles to guide your assessment. Alternatively, you might add new principles that tailor to your own objectives.